Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll start here in a moment. My name is John Arico. I'm the Council Commissioner for the Daniel Webster Council. Um, so we're just going to uh, let a few more minutes uh, go by to allow a few more members uh, of, of, of Daniel Webster Council to join this call. Uh, we do have quite a few of you that have signed up for tonight's uh, session. And so, uh, again, I'd like to give you a couple of minutes to uh, for everybody to give everybody an opportunity to join. So uh, you know, right now we're up to 19 participants that have joined. We're we're actually scheduled to have have uh, significantly more than that. Uh, so again, I, I'm going to wait here a few minutes while we we allow others to to join. So um, Tyler, if you don't mind, you know, let me know when you know you start to see things kind of tail off, um, you know, slow down, and then I'll certainly start the uh, the the presentation. So. Uh, hopefully at this point everybody's able to see uh, my slide. Uh, the slide you should be able to see at the moment is uh, the the uh, title page, which says Internet Recharter uh, 2.0, October 2022. Of course, with my name, John Arico, as Council Commissioner. Yeah, thanks, John. A couple of housekeeping items for the participants: uh, your audio and visual. Um, will be turned off as participants so you'll still hear uh, all the audio um, it's a webinar series so there's a Q&A button uh, here available as well down at the bottom of your uh, zoom window screen uh, feel free to uh, type any questions you have throughout the evening uh, and our panelists will uh, address them either uh, writing them out so everybody can view them or we'll address them uh, during the presentation as well so We'll give it a few more minutes as we wait for a couple more people to come in. And uh, thank you for everybody for joining us tonight. Tyler, it doesn't seem like anybody else has joined, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started at this point in time. Um, and, and again, as Tyler indicated, uh, this this is being recorded, uh, and this will this presentation, along with the recording, will be posted uh, for those individuals who want to kind of go back and say, "Yeah, right now, what exactly did John say?" Uh, and you want to try to refresh your memory on that. So, uh, you know, the first thing what I want to do is uh, let you guys know, you know, what's our areas of focus tonight? What are we gonna talk about? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna review the timeline. Uh, we're also gonna go through some of the changes that were made by national office as it relates to the internet rechartering system. Um, we're also gonna go over, you know, some of the common issues that we encounter when we're going through and processing uh, the charters that we receive and some of the, those defects and how you guys can really help us in avoiding that and helping us in terms of getting your charter posted in a much more timely fashion. Uh, we're gonna go through what the 2022 recharter fees are. Um, even though the, those were communicated back in July, uh, we, we know that oftentimes, you know, emails get missed, those communications get missed. So we'll give you guys an, op, uh, we'll refresh everybody's memory in terms of what those recharter fees are for the upcoming year. And then we're gonna go through, uh, you know, how do you use the internet rechartering? We're actually gonna go into a live uh, demo um, of, of, of the system. And then of course, that finally we'll touch on some available resources that are, are you know, that you have at your uh, fingertips. So with respect to internet ch uh, uh, chartering and the timeline, um, you know, the timeline right now is that internet ch rechartering by the units needs to be completed by uh, November 15th. Um, this was first communicated to all of the key threes back on September 23rd uh, via an email. And we know that not everybody opens up their emails, but it was indeed communicated. Now, the first question that you may have is, is why didn't you communicate this earlier to us? And frankly, uh, we did not get notification of what Nationals timeline was until very late uh, in, in November, I'm sorry, August, uh, late August, early September. 
Um, and, and what's happening right now is, is we, the volunteers, are actually getting this information oftentimes ahead of the professionals. So, so again, what internet rechartering is, is, as you can see, the way they have outlined it is, is you know, there were certain steps that you know, they wanted us to take between the, uh, August 1st and September 30th. Part of that is, is making sure that you guys have a recharter champion. Uh, in some units, it may not be the committee chair that does the uh, recharter for your organization. Uh, I learned uh, while I was at Massabesic last week that a, a committee chair actually went to a den leader and said, hey, guess what? Uh, would you like to do internet rechartering? And so they made them a, a key three delegate to in order, and then that enabled them to be able to do the internet rechartering. Um, you know, take, it gives you an opportunity right now, if you've not already done it, is really identify those individuals whose um, youth protection is going to be expiring. Now the slide shows March 1st. And what that's referring to is is National's policy. And what National has put in place, um, and, and again, this relates to the national policy, not DWC policy, but the national policy, is, is that any member whose youth protection training is, is set to expire prior to March 1st, you, the unit, will not be able to submit your charter uh, until those individuals um, renew their youth protection training. Again, that is based on the, the national policy and not DWC policy. I will go into the DWC policy shortly, and that is the policy that you should and all units should be following. Uh, so of course then, you know, uh, this time frame, internet rechartering opened up October 1st, and, and during this time period is where, you know, you have the opportunity to update, add, remove members, uh, this is an opportunity to recheck and verify youth protection training. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you also to collect fees. And then finally, you know, your members, the, a member of the key three approves the charter and it then gets processed, uh, submitted to the council. Um, once your charter is submitted, uh, it's at that point in time where the council then does a review of the uh, charter that you submitted and making sure that everything is correct and accurate. And, and, and that would then allow them to be able to post uh, the charter. Um, in terms of some of the changes that occurred in 2022, and I've already touched on this, uh, the first one, and that is with respect to non-compliance with YPT. Um, with respect to that item, and again, what's gonna happen is, is if you have an individual who has, is not compliant with youth protection training guidelines, uh, the unit will actually, you'll receive an error uh, and you will not be able to submit your charter um, uh, until that individual uh, has, has, has taken youth protection training um, or you guys decide that, you know what, we're not going to wait for John Doe to finish uh, their, their youth protection training. We're just going to remove him uh, as a, or her as a member of, of, of our unit. The nice feature that they also added this in the current year, and this was not available last year, was that fact that you guys are gonna have an opportunity to print your unit charter prior to submittal for review. And now why is that important? Because some of us are much more paper oriented and we like to be able to take a review of that charter prior to, prior to actually hitting the submit button. Um, you know, I'm actually an old school. Uh, I like I like paper in, in some case in a lot of cases and be able to look at it, tick and tie and see, did, gee, did I miss somebody? Uh, oftentimes, I know you know we can potentially miss something if we're looking at it on the screen. Um, the other nice feature actually is is also our our team, our member care team, can actually uh, view the charter and assist units real time. What does that mean? Uh, that means that if you're having an issue as you're trying to uh, update or, or add or do something like that with respect to your charter, the council is going to be able to view your charter real time in terms of what you're seeing and then be able to help assist you in terms of, of, of as you go through and process that. Um, last year, there were certainly some hiccups with respect to those individuals who elected to pay via ACH. Um, they have improved that payment process. And again, that's specifically related to ACH, and that's the online banking option. Um, some of the other changes that they have, and I don't know if we have any post or 
uh, exploring posts or clubs online tonight. But if you do, there is some additional support that is provided for you. Uh, last year, I know it, it, was, it was a little bit tricky for you, but they have certainly improved that. Um, they've updated some features in terms of both registering and also identifying multiples. And when I refer to a multiple, I'm referring to, you know, it could potentially be an adult, you know, for example, like myself. Uh, I'm currently an assistant scoutmaster with Troop 5 out of Bedford, New Hampshire, but I'm also the council commissioner uh, for the Daniel Webster Council. Both positions are volunteer positions. And so, you know, my primary membership is actually with Troop 5 assistant, as assistant scoutmaster, and with the council, I am considered a multiple um, registration. The same could be true for a youth. A youth could also be potentially a multiple as well. Um, if you're, for example, if you are, have a youth who is a member of a scout BSA unit, but they're also a member of a crew, that all you have to do is designate which one is going to be their primary membership, and then the other would be their multiple uh, registration. There's also additional validation improvements that were made with respect to minimum number of leaders, and we're going to go over that here in a second. Uh, because I know there's always confusion in terms of minimum number of leaders. And so we'll go through that and clarify uh, minimum number of leaders. Um, also with respect to the CBC, which is short for criminal background check and then youth protection training. And then finally, an email is going, uh, approval will be sent out to the units key three and the key three delegate once, once the individual who's responsible for completing the charter um, uh, hits the submit button, that email will go to, to one of those four individuals. Um, now, one of the important things with respect to the approval, and I'll get into this a little bit later, is, is make sure that the key three, as well as the key three delegate have, have talked and that they've indicated which individual is actually going to approve the charter. And again, I'll touch on this a little bit later. Now, with respect to minimum number of leaders, at the Cub Scout level, you have six positions that are required. Um, the first position is your charter organization rep. Your second position is your committee chair. Your third position is your, your Cub Master. And then you have to have two additional committee members uh, and then a DEN leader. Now, your committee members, what it's going to ask you is, is that, that you have to designate whether the, the, you know, those two individuals, that one of them has to be a committee member or they can be a PAC trainer or a new member coordinator. And that is what the system is going to be asking you. So again, it's very important that you do have um, individuals that fill each of these roles. Now, I know in some smaller units, this is, this is a challenge, especially where you guys have and wear multiple hats you're still going to have to follow the six minimum uh, leader requirement. And so, you, you know, if you're the committee chair, but you're also potentially a DEN leader, you can't be both on the, on the charter. You're going to have to pick yourself as the committee chair. Somebody else is going to have to be take on that DEN leader uh, role. You can still act as that DEN leader, but, but again, you know, that is the way the requirement is going to, to be. And again, of course, the den leader is somebody who's got to have at least one den leader, and they could be a lion, tiger, wolf, bear, weed lows leader, you know, whatever it might may need to be. Um, with, respect, with respect to Scouts BSA, uh, you have five positions that must be filled. And some of these are very similar to with respect to the Cub Scouts. And again, that's your charter organization rep, your committee chair, your scout master, and then you have to have two committee members as well. And again, what they'll indicate is, is, is you have to designate one individual as a committee member, and then they'll ask you to designate an individual as being a new member coordinator. Um, with respect to if you are a, a, a venturing uh, crew or if you're a post, um, in this particular case, what you're going to do is follow the same criteria that I have here. The only difference is, is you will replace the Scoutmaster uh, with an advisor role. The next area that I would like to cover is with respect to minimum number of Scouts. Um, this really impacts those units who have less than five, but more than two youth that are currently, uh, that are currently in their units. If, 
if you're a unit that falls in this category, what you have to have is you have to have scout executive approval in order to recharter for the upcoming year. Now, what's the process for you to be able to seek that approval? The, the first step you have to take is you have to communicate with your district commissioner. Um, and, and when you communicate with your district commissioner, you have to have a documented plan in terms of how do you plan to, re to, to recruit. Now, part of your plan to recruit might be that, that as you do activities in your unit, you're gonna take pictures and you're gonna publicize those perhaps in the local paper, or you're gonna ask, uh, reach out to the council and you're gonna ask for use of the mobile, mobile recruitment trailer uh, at perhaps an old town day or something along those lines. And so it's that, it's really that, that easy in terms of what you have to provide. Once you've provided that to the district commissioner, the district commissioner will communicate to me um, and then I will compile all of these that, that we receive. And I'll, I'll sit down with Jay Gary, the scout executive, and we'll review each of your requests in order in terms of minimum number of scouts um, uh, to, for rechartering. Again, you know, we want youth to be involved in here um, uh, in the program and we want them to stay in the program. So again, you know, please don't be discouraged if you do have less than five, but if you have more than two, um, you know, again, that is, is you know, we, we can certainly help you and it's not the end of you being able to uh, charter. The one thing I am going to say, though, is you are still going to have to have meet the minimum number of leader requirements for for your respective units, um, whether you're a Cub Scout or Scouts BSA crew or or exploring post. The next item I want to go over is really kind of just remind everybody with respect to what is the Daniel Webster Council's youth protection policy, um, youth protection training certification cannot expire within a charter year. So what does that mean? So that means that, that for 2023, your certification cannot expire at all or have an expiration date that has a 23 at the end of it for the year. Um, your youth protection certification has to have a, a, an expiration date of at least 20 uh, marked 24 on it. Um, now you say, why is that? And why do we have to follow the DWC policy versus the national policy? The national, the policy actually that, that what the national office indicates is, is that the most stringent policy is what must be followed. And again, that is per the national guidelines. Um, if you're, for example, you know, if you're chartered by a Catholic church, for example, not only do you have to take the youth protection training for the Boy Scouts of America, but you also have to take the youth protection training that is specific to the Catholic Church as well. So again, you know, you can't say, well, I took the BSA's policy, uh, youth protection training, so I'm good to a Catholic Church organization. I will tell you that the diocese is very, very good at monitoring those individuals and, and does reach out to units uh, to make sure that they are following their guidelines uh, as it relates to youth protection training. So again, just a quick recap here, youth protection training, your youth protection training certification cannot expire within a charter year. Um, in terms of some of the defects that we most often uh, encounter, uh, the first one that we encountered, we always encounter actually is a missing criminal background check form. Now, one of the things I know some folks are gonna say is, is look, I, I sent the application into the office. Um, you know, my leader got, got, got uh, added, but why is it still showing the CBC? You know, this is, this is dumb, right? Look, this is what we're gonna say. We all make mistakes and, and occasionally we forget to um, uh, mark a box. And in this particular case, the system requires us to check a box uh, in here. And so what we're gonna ask is that if you have a situation where, where you do have an individual, no background check missing, we just ask that you please you know, complete a new one um, and, and that form is available online and I'll show you where you can find that form here shortly um, and then upload it as part of your recharter packet submission. Uh, and that would really kind of be the easiest thing uh, to do. If you go back to, uh, to, to member care, 
um, you know, we have to do the research and everything else. And, and it's not that it, it it's just going to take time. It would just be easier if you uh, completed a new CBC. Um, this one really should really not be an issue this year based on the new uh, measures that have been put in place. Uh, but that is with respect to a missing youth protection training uh, is missing or has expired. Again, it shouldn't be an issue because again, National has put in that safeguard, uh, that guardrail that basically says, look, if you have a, a missing or an expired uh, youth protection, you're not gonna be able to submit the, uh, uh, your charter anyway. So again, real important here, review your youth protection aging report in advance and make sure that everybody's up to date. Um, missing adult application. Uh, that's another one that we very often encounter. For example, you may add a, a new adult as part of your charter submission. But one of the things that sometimes gets forget is, is uploading that, that adult application because we still have to check that application and make sure that everything is good. So, so again, prior to you submitting uh, uh, your charter, make, you know, just take a quick inventory and make sure that everybody on the charter has had that application uh, submitted. And, and if it's a new adult, make sure that you upload that application uh, as part of your charter submission. Uh, missing signatures is another big one. Uh, this is one actually, you know, if I had to guess, I would say 10% of all charters that we received last year was missing a signature. Um, uh, and so, you know, those could be a missing signature on a application. Those could be, in some cases, you know, we were missing a charter organization rep's approval of a charter. And in that particular case, we can't even process the charter until it's done. So, you know, when I say how many units did this impact, this impact is somewhere between 30 and 40 units last year where their charters were not posted because we needed required signatures either on the chart on the on the application that were submitted or on the uh, uh, the fact that the COR just hadn't gone in and approved the charter. So definitely very key. And I just touched on this one, which is missing key three approval. So make sure you know, it's really going to be important that you agree in advance as to who will approve the charter submission. I can tell you that, you know, and it, this is really important. I know one of the biggest complaints we got last year uh, with respect to the new system was that charter organization reps actually were going in and realizing that somebody else had already approved the charter ahead of them, and they weren't happy about that. And so it's really important that we maintain those good relationships with respect to our charter organization. So it, again, talk amongst the key three and the key three delegate and, and agree in advance as to who's going to approve and when that's going to happen. Because we certainly don't want um, a charter held up because it's missing a signature or approval. Uh, incorrect payment amount. Um, again, you know, for the most part, the system goes ahead and calculates uh, the amount of what the charter fees are going to be due and payable. Uh, but it's really important that to make sure that, that you do remit the correct amount. So for example, you know, if your calculated fees is $1,000 and you only uh, submit 500, um, the charter will be placed on hold until full payment is made. Uh, if, for example, you know, you know, then there's three payment methods, which we'll go through shortly. But if one of those payment methods that you elect to do is I will mail in the check to the council office and you don't mail it in, that will result in your charter not being posted. Um, you know, if I had to venture a guess in terms of last year, how many units that were in this particular status, uh, we were looking at easily 5% of all submissions last year. What does that equate to? Somewhere around 20 to 30 um, um, charters were on hold pending um, a receipt of the appropriate amount of money being remitted. So again, really important in terms of how can you help us be able to pr uh, process these charters? Make sure that some of these things are taken care of in advance. Um, now this one here is if, if, I don't know if I have anybody online tonight that is either uh, a crew or an exploring post. Um, as you know, the, the age um, for, for, for those individuals is 14 to 20. Um, what tends to happen in this particular case, especially if you're a crew, 
is that if you have a youth who's turning 18, basically what has to happen is they have to complete an adult application, they have to complete youth protection training, and they have to also submit the criminal background check. And again, I'm not talking about where a youth become, like in a Scout BSA, you may have a youth who, who turns 18 and you decide or they decide that they want to become an assistant scout master. That is totally different than what I'm referring to here. Uh, again, what I'm referring to specifically here is with respect to those individuals that are in crews, clubs, or uh, posts, exploring posts. Um, the last thing again is missing documents. You know, again, if you need, if there are any missing documents, be sure to upload all of those documents, such as either the criminal background check, the application or if you wanna also upload a proof of youth protection training as well. Next area I'd like to cover um, is with respect to the 2022 recharter fees. And again, I just wanna go over them so that way there is no misunderstanding as to what are the fees. Um, with respect to 2022, and again, this, these are fees that were announced earlier this year. Uh, the unit recharter fee is $100. That is an increase from prior year. Uh, prior year fee was $75. Member fees uh, for Cubs, for Scouts BSA, Exploring, Sea Scouts, um, and then kindergarten through 20 years of age is $75 this year. Um, exploring program will be 45 and adults uh, volunteers will be 45. Those two actually remain the same. Scout life is being increased to $15. And then also as previously communicated, you know, the DWC fee um, um, is going to be um, a reach next year, going to be at $12, but for this year is at $10.08 uh, is what the DWC fee is. Uh, so again, that's just a quick uh, little refresh in terms of what the recharter fees are. And again, if, if, you know, all of this information is available on the DWC website, and I will take you there here shortly so you can see it. Um, I do want to touch quickly on new youth. It's, it, is, it does happen from time to time where we have a new youth. And some units elect to wait to um, uh, add those new youth as part of the charter process. Unfortunately, applications must be processed prior to completing your recharter. Um, you know, and how can applications be processed prior to recharter? You know, at the moment, you have two ways in which that can occur. The first is, you, you know, if an application has been completed online or it has a paper application has been submitted to member care. Now, the, you're, you're asking yourself, why? Why do I have to submit it prior to recharter? The answer is pretty simple. The youth is not going to be covered by BSA insurance until the charter is posted. So if you wait to submit your that new youth as part of your recharter packet, they're not going to be covered until the until their application until the charter is posted at that point in time. If you provide that application prior to that uh, rechartering, that application is given today. It's inputted tomorrow, and then that youth is is covered today. In, in essence, in, in essence, immediately. So again, don't delay uh, in terms of when those applications go in. Uh, very, very important. The other thing I do want to highlight with respect to applications, and, and um, this was communicated last week at the Massabesic Roundtable. This was also communicated at the Arrowhead Roundtable uh, that, in which both of those I attended, and that is paper applications for youth are going away. Um, I don't have a date yet in terms of when paper applications are going away, but online applications for youth will be the only way that applications will be accepted in the future. Um, the other thing as part of that, and again, th these are this is really, really fresh here. And again, a date hasn't been provided to us, but we will certainly communicate that date as to when that's going to occur when we go to uh, fully online. Um, and and um, I apologize, I just lost my train of thought in terms of what I was going to say. So, um, uh, but again, very important that online applications are submitted um, and, and, and that is what's going to be the new way. Oh, I know what it was. 
So the other important feature that's going to be part of the online, those of you who today already uh, accept online applications know that, that you know, what has to happen is the unit leader basically has to go into the system, approve the application um, uh, and everything. That is actually going to be streamlined. Um, the minute the, the application is received, payment is received, that youth is automatically going to be added to your roster. So they have taken out a step in terms of you guys having to have to do an extra step uh, and they've really streamlined that process. So that's another added feature that's going to happen once they do go to all online applications. Um, I do wanna to touch on the new member fee real quick. Um, again, the new member fee is, it, the amount due with respect to that is $25. Um, you know, if you are taking advantage of the DWC, um, uh, and this will be due if, if the DWC incentive requirements were not met, you know, DWC has provided a lot of opportunities this past uh, recruitment season uh, to, to basically have that new member fee waived. Uh, and so hopefully you've been reading those emails. Hopefully you've been seeing that information that has been pushed out by Cindy DeFilippo. Um, but, but that is certainly an opportunity for you. Again, if you're not taking advantage of the incentives that were pushed out and have been communicated, um, you know, that fee will be uh, uh, definitely will be due and payable. Now, I do want to go into next the internet rechartering. Um, so when you go, there is two ways to log into internet rechartering, <clears throat> sorry, internet rechartering. Um, the first way is through my dot scouting account slash backslash internet advancement. And the second is you log in through internet advancement through scouting.org. Now, DWC on the, on the webpage has actually provided a link for you. So if you were to go to the DWC website, and again, I will take you there to show you this, um, there's actually a link that says portal and you click on that portal, it will bring you right to uh, the internet rechartering page that you're currently seeing uh, at the moment. You know, and again, and who can access this? Basically, any member of the key three should be able to do this, as well as the key three delegate. Um, once you do log in uh, to there, what you're gonna hit is this, what's called this main screen. And so the main screen is what you will see uh, when, you, when you log in. Um, when you log in, you're going to see down here, uh, you see here where you have this recharter. That's what you're going to want to click on right down here in order to get into the internet rechartering uh, aspect and what you have to then do. And that's really kind of where the work begins. Um, that's where, you know, this is what it looks like. And I will take you to the, to the live, uh, live demo here in a second. Uh, but this is where you have the ability to uh, do a roster update. This is where you are going to check your youth protection training. This is where criminal background checks are going to be. This is where you can change uh, adult leader positions. This is where you can also add or delete members and also manage multiples. Why don't I at the moment take you to um, that, that demo to give you that opportunity um, uh, to, to see it live. So let me do this. There's my screen. Acknowledge. All right, and again, here's the recharter button. So again, this is the main page that you're going to see uh, when you log into your internet advancement. You know, here's your recharter. Click on recharter. All right, and so now what this now does allows you to do is this is where where you're now able to go in and redo a roster update. So, for example, as I'm looking down here, um, and you can see right now, Alvin Rose, you know, he's got a green check mark with respect to youth protection training. He's got a green check mark in terms of his criminal background check, and that's also checked. So that's good. The other thing that you'll notice with respect to Alvin is is you will see over here where you have the, um, uh, his, the amount of fee that is due to Alvin. Um, if I scroll down, you can now see where Clarence and Derek are actually, they need to update their youth protection training. 
Uh, and, you, and you can say, all right, well, what do I have to do for them to be able to do that? The answer is, is they should go into their MyDot scouting account and, up, and, and take that youth protection training. Um, now you're gonna say, okay, well, then they're gonna have to get me their, um, a copy of their certificate. Number one, you should actually have a copy of it anyway, um, just, just so that way, peace of mind. Um, but at the end of the day, if they go into my dot scouting and take it, what you have now the ability to see here is, and I don't know if you can see it, there's this called refresh roster. If you were to click on that, what it's going to do, if, if, if Clarence and Derek have gone in and they took uh, that, that youth protection training, and I would wait 24 to 48 hours before hitting the refresh, okay, just to make sure that my dot scouting updates in a timely manner. Um, what will end up happening is if they've done their part on my dot scouting, it will automatically sync once you hit the refresh button. And, and this will now turn from red to green is what will happen. Um, same thing in terms of if you've started your process in terms of adding, say, a new youth, and you've sent that application in to member care, um, you may not see them here right away. So again, what I would do is reach out to member care and say, hey, I sent an application in for, for little Johnny uh, or, little, or little Jane, and, and you know, I don't see it on there. And they may say, you know what, I just entered it into the system. Um, you know, give it 24 to 48 hours. Again, you should be able to go in, hit your refresh roster here, um, and it will populate it with that new individual in there. Um, now, the, the next thing that I wanna really kind of show you is, is how do you change a, um, oops, uh, how do you change a, a leader, okay? A leader position. And so the best way to change a leader position, let me, there we go, all right. So the best way to change a leader position um, here is, is by basically you click on what's over here, this little pencil, all right? And again, I will go back to the live presentation demo so for you to be able to see it. So I'm gonna go up down here to Jimmy Welch and I am gonna click on this little pencil right here. It's then gonna bring up Jimmy and it's gonna show member type is adult and right now he's currently the den leader, but we're gonna give him a promotion because he's really enthusiastic. And you know, he's now gonna become the Cub Master. And so you click update information. It's then gonna kind of come through. Let me come, come down and you can see here where Jimmy is now the Cub Master for, uh, for, this, for this pack. That's how you would go in and update um, update a, a leader position. Um, if you have a, let's assume that maybe Derek uh, is a new leader, you know, and you say, all right, I have, he's a new leader. I've just gone in and I've entered him into the system. How do I get a copy of his, his application into uh, upload it? Right here, and, and, and unfortunately the demo is not gonna allow me to do it, uh, but here's where you would uh, click on where it says upload document. You would click on upload document you would then click uh, and drag um, the document that you wanna upload and it will then upload that document for you. Um, all right, let's see, let me go back over here. All right, so uploading document, again, pretty simple. Again, in this particular case, you know what I'm gonna show you here is you got Clarence who has got a, a YPT um, that we've identified. Again, you're gonna click on the upload document Again, if he's gone into my dot scouting, you should be able to um, do an upload of that. However, let's just say in this particular case, Clarence did not do the youth protection training um, online. Clarence elected to take it in-person training because he attended the, uh, the last round table where they were doing youth protection training. So in that case, you know, he should have a copy of his record from that training uh, that, that he completed it. Again, if he gives you a copy of that, that signed completed, uh, this is where you can go in and, and upload it. Um, and then it, his, his record will then indeed get, get updated. Um, the next thing that I wanna quickly go over is, again, I've touched on this a little bit, which is res with respect to multiple registrations. Um, and again, I'm gonna do is go back into 
go back into um, the live demo. And what I'm going to do is actually, I am going to click on Jimmy. I like Jimmy. So we're going to click on Jimmy. We're going to click on manage members right here. Click on make as multiple. And you can see right now what this is actually going to do, and everybody's going to be able to see this, right? But in this particular case, Jimmy is not only a Daniel Webster Council Cubmaster, but he actually also um, um, is a member of Spirit of Adventure. And he happens to be part of a ship. Um, and he actually happens to be part of the Lone Tree Foundation ship of 1791. Uh, so again, you would go in, you would mark him as a multiple. And again, and, 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 and so mark as multiple. Error, organization not found. Okay, so um, let me try National Council. Non-position, mark as multiple. All right, that one took. All right. And so if I go back down to Jimmy, one of the things you'll notice with Jimmy is that we actually marked him as being a primary at the national council level. And his fee, if you, if, I don't know if you remember seeing it, but it actually went from being $54 it is now showing zero dollars that is now owed there. So again, you are gonna see that real time. And if, if you need me to go back and show you that again, I can certainly show you that again, um, not a problem. All right. Um, the next step, let's assume that you've gone through everything and you've, you've done everything that you're supposed to do, or at least you think you did. Um, and you go in and you hit validate and recharter, which is right here. What, what the system is going to do is, is it's going to take a look at all of your data that you have now updated, that you also potentially uploaded, and it's going to do a quick review. And it's going to say, in this particular case, it says, I actually still have leaders who do not have a current youth protection uh, certification. So again, this is where, this is, I mentioned earlier, where you're going to get stopped if you have somebody who's missing a, a youth protection uh, 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 their youth protection is not updated or their criminal background check. Again, this will stop you from proceeding any further until you resolve that, that issue. Let's assume though you don't have any errors, what's, what's gonna happen? Uh, um, so what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna then be brought to a payment screen. Uh, you're gonna, there's two features that you're gonna see on this screen. The first one is over here. And I, and I know this is really, really small and you guys can't really see it well, but this is your payment summary. And this is gonna summarize the, what you, the, uh, the amount of fees that are due by, by the unit. Um, the next thing that the, you're gonna see on the screen is payment method. And you actually have three ways in which to pay. You can do via credit card. However, if you do a credit card, they will be assessing a 3% fee. If you pay, elect to pay by ACH, there's a $1 handling fee uh, that will be part of that. Um, and then it, the, obviously the last one is a check. You can mail payment to the council office. And I would make you know, payment, if you are gonna do a check and you're gonna mail it to the, pay, uh, to the office, you're gonna want the check payable to the Daniel Webster Council. And you're gonna wanna mail it to 1500 Blondin, I'm sorry, Bodwell Road, Manchester, New Hampshire, 03109, and that's the member care center. So again, after you've gone through, you've had a very successful, you're not getting any more error messages from the system, you've paid the bill, then what happens? Well, what's gonna end up happening is, is a, a letter is going to be sent, and this is an example of what, you're, what they might see to the key three or the key three delegates. And again, any one of those individuals may approve it, but be sure to coordinate who in your unit is, is going to approve it. Um, the preferred approval is actually by the, uh, your charter organization rep. And you may ask, why is that? At the end of the day, your charter organization is the one who's responsible for approving leaders. This is their opportunity, even though like just to say, Jimmy was already been a, a, a member of the PAC for two years, 
this is actually the charter organization's opportunity to review the list of leaders to say, hey, do I still, am I still okay with all of these leaders, right? So again, the preferred method here is that your charter organization rep is the person that really should be the one that signs uh, your charter, your charter. And then of course, the final step is the fact that, you know, the, the charter organization has, has signed off on everything. And you can see here where, um, you know, you get, you get approved, you know, thing, life is good, right? Charter has been approved by the COR. It's now been fully submitted for the council to review. Um, the last thing is available resources. And there is a lot of available resources uh, uh, that is available to you, the units. Um, the first one is a user's guide. And again, I'm gonna show you where all of this is in a, in a second. Um, the other item is actually, they've updated the memo, I'm sorry, the uh, video that they did last year. The video runs about 15 minutes, uh, but it does provide, it, is, it has been updated and we'll walk you through the recharter process and a lot of the updates that they have actually made. Now, the final resource that you have, and this is really truly a wealth of information for you, is the Daniel Webster Council website. And I'm gonna take you actually to that website right now, because I want you to be able to see where to go and to look for things. So here's your Daniel Webster Council website. One of the things features that we actually did this year is we actually made, you can see it's right here is ReCharter. And so it's on the very front page of uh, as soon as you get into the website. Last year, if you may remember, you had to go to more and then you had to kind of toggle down in order to find it. Not the case this year. So again, I'm gonna click on ReCharter and this is gonna actually show you kind of what you can find. So that user guide that I, I just showed, I gave you a screenshot of, you can download that and it's available to you right here. There's some frequently asked questions that are right here. If you can't figure out how do I get access to the internet rechartering portal, not a problem. Come to the Daniel Webster Council website, click on the rechartering portal, and bingo, this is where it will, this is where it brings you right to that, to that log on page uh, where you need to go. And then uh, some other documents that this has, you know, this has uh, a copy of the rechartering timeline. This has uh, also a user, uh, the user guide again, even though you can access it up above, you know, again, we listed again, the background check form. That was something that I mentioned to you. It's right here. You know, if I click on that form, uh, click on that link, it will bring you to the background check form that you would then need to have completed and then filled out and you can uh, upload it. Can't remember what the fees are because John spoke too fast that night. Not a problem, right here, National BSA's uh, uh, infographic. So this here provides the, the national fees right here for you. But you say, well, but where's the DWC fee? If you click on this one, this is actually registration fees that are prorated by month, but that will show you the DWC fee. And again, DWC's use protection uh, policy is right here. And then if you need to print membership cards right here, as well as unit charters. So those are all available resources on the DWC website. Again, it's, it's, it's right there in the main ribbon of as soon as you get onto the DWC website. So, and that really kind of gives everything. At this point, what I'm gonna do is open up um, the floor and give, my, give myself a chance to answer any questions that may have been posed in the Q&A. But I do want to thank you for making a difference um, in the lives of our youth in New Hampshire. I can't tell you the importance role that you guys play in it. Um, you know, one of my fondest memories as a parent was when my son joined uh, Scouts, and this is going back many years ago. But he he joined Scouts, and he was a Tiger Cub. And at the time, in my son's unit they did uh, space derby. And those of you who may not be familiar with space derby, you basically get a fishing line that you attach to two ends. Uh, you then get a piece of balsam uh, uh, block and you shave it down and everything else. You make basically like a, a spaceship and then it's propelled by a rubber band. And I remember getting in the truck with my son and I said to, and he goes to me, dad, I'm gonna win tonight. And, you know, of course, as a parent, 
you know, we, we, we try to say, well, you know what, you know, winning is not that important. And what's important is that you've done your best and, and that's what's most important. And so we're at, we're at the event and as his um, spaceship goes down and, and is in each heat, he's winning. And you can imagine <laughs> all of a sudden now dad starts to, you know, get that tightness in the chest and not the bad tightness, but the one is like, oh my God, could this really be happening? Could he really be winning this thing? At, at the end of the day, he ends up taking first place and he's so excited. He goes, I want to call mom. And he picks up and says, okay, so we get in, the, get in my truck and I hand him the phone and he calls mom, all excited. And he goes, mom, 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 I won, I won, I won and everything else. And then he comes home and mom goes and tucks him in bed and he's got his trophy with him. And it's not about the trophy, but it's about what we do for our youth. It's about giving our youth the confidence. And this is why you guys are really so important to us. He says to mom, he goes, I want to give this trophy to my son because I want him to feel the way I feel tonight. That's what we're here for. We're here to give these kids confidence. We are here to help them in life. We're here to say, you know what? If you don't succeed today, there's always tomorrow. And what's important is that you learn from your learn. And that's, and, and that's really kind of why you guys really do truly make a difference in the lives of our, of our youth. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and I am going to open it up to uh, questions. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, great presentation. Got a couple questions here to uh, to field. Kathleen uh, has some questions around specifically on preparing for internet rechartering and going through the process. Uh, the first is um, where can they validate that a criminal background check authorization form has been on file for their adult leaders? Uh, she just wants to make sure that when she starts the process, all their adult leaders have everything that they need. Yeah, I mean, so unfortunately, the only way you're gonna know if if they have actually had it processed, and I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen for a second. Um, so is is really kind of starting the the internet recharter process, right? So it was it really means going into the system, hitting the the recharter, and then really kind of going here. This is this is gonna tell you whether or not there is one on file for them. Um, if there is one on file, this you'll have a green check mark next to the leader. Great, thanks, John. Um, this one is around uh, making sure that uh, youth are registered if they're Eagle Scout candidates. So uh, this situation uh, really impacts all of our Scouts BSA troops if they get into uh, this particular case. But specifically, uh, they have an Eagle Scout candidate that's going to complete uh, their project and everything before they turn 18 leading into Thanksgiving. But they may not get their border review completed by uh, the time uh, Thanksgiving or December, for example. So do they need to uh, register that um, youth member uh, on their charter, uh, even though uh, his Eagle board may not have been completed, but all of his other Eagle requirements um have been done such as the completion of his project yeah. uh and and everything there so so the individual doesn't indicate the age of the youth but what i am going to say is that you know even though a youth earns the rank of eagle and especially if they are under the age of 18 they really should remain with the unit because there is no better role model to the younger youth than those those individuals who have earned the rank of Eagle. Um, you know, my son earned the rank of Eagle at the age of 15 and he remained with the troop until he, until he aged out. Um, that's the greatest, one of the greatest services that our Eagles can do in terms of giving back um, is to remain with the unit and to remain um, uh, it registered. Yeah, John, that's a that's a great, great feedback. Um, what about in instances where maybe uh, the Eagle candidate is going to be turning 18 uh, before the end of this year, but they haven't had their border review yet? 
you know, when I read the guide to advancement, it indicates as long as the uh, candidates completed the requirements of the project, they can have an Eagle Board review beyond the age of 18. That is um, correct. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think, here what Kathleen's looking for as well is uh, if they do everything, do they need to renew that candidate uh, as a youth member on the roster uh, right now, knowing that they turn 18 on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Uh, or is it okay if they uh, drop them, uh, not renewing them as a youth member, even though they haven't had their border review yet? Yeah. I think that's the, that's the I, yeah, question. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and Tyler, please, or Derek, please correct me if I'm wrong in this, because I, I want to make sure that Kathleen gets the correct information. But if you have that youth who is going to turn 18 on Thanksgiving, you know, again, and as Tyler, you've stated it correctly, which is, is that if they've gone through and they've completed their EGLE project, they've, they've, they have completed all of the paperwork, they've submitted that paperwork, and if the only thing that they're waiting for is their um, EGLE Board of Review by the district, there is, in my opinion, there is no need for them to uh, remain on that charter um, you know, again, once they've submitted it, they should be good to go. Derek, Tyler, different uh, thought on that? John, I, th I think you hit it. You hit it there as well. And Derek can can add to it as uh, as well. Um, the requirement is that the Eagle candidates going to need to complete all of their paperwork and submit their paperwork, their project for validation on their rank application um, before kind of the expiration of their uh, tenure as a youth member, and then that goes into the board of review, which could be scheduled beyond the age of 18. Uh, the details of this particular example, you can find it on page 53 of the Guide to Advancement on the Eagle Board. Uh, there are some indications there that give you specific details about uh, the length of which a board of review can be scheduled beyond the 18th birthday, uh, and I believe that is page 53 uh, with Eagle Board of Reviews on the Guide to Advancement. Okay. Uh, questions here on multiples, and uh, Doug asked these questions, and they're a great question. We run into these issues where uh, a youth member or an adult volunteer or even a youth member may think that they're paid in one unit, the other unit thinks they're paid. So specifically, um, if a uh, member is dual registered, so they're primary in one unit, multiple in another, uh, is it correct that the unit that is the primary unit where they hold their paid membership. They don't mark them as a multiple, correct? They, it's that, the unit that is multipling them, uh, marks them as a as a multiple. Is that, that correct? That is, that is correct. Um, that the primary unit should not mark them as a primary. That is correct. Perfect. And uh, if by instance, and we may uh, have to research this a little bit, but we could. Uh, may know it. Uh, what happens if a unit marks uh, the scout or the volunteer as a multiple, both units do, and then uh, the volunteer may not pay a registration fee? Uh, yeah. Will the system catch that, or is that something that's more administrative side for the member care center? So so I, 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 I'm going to say, you know, and this, I don't have an exact um, uh, proof of this, but I'm going to say that the system's not going to really, probably not going to catch that. Um, and that's probably going to be something where member care, as you guys are going through reviewing, are going to probably catch that and then are going to have to go back to the, one of those units um, and say, okay, who, where, who's the primary and who's not the primary and who's going to pay for, you know, uh, John to, to be uh, a paid, paid individual, paid member. Yeah, John, uh, exactly. So what we're, what our process is going to be in the member care center, uh, myself and uh, my other team member that's going to be reviewing all the charters, what we have to do once you submit your charter is validate the information. And in our validation window, we're going to get a highlight that says for us to validate that that registered member is in fact a multiple. And then we can see based on the registration history where they pay their membership as primary. And then we're going to work with those units to make any adjustments on any fees that are owed. So we are going to be able to validate that. It won't be caught in the system by the unit, uh, but the member care center will have that as part of their validation efforts. Uh, question around uh, requirements for adult volunteers at a PAC level. Um, 
particularly can a den leader or any volunteer at a Cub Scout pack multiple their position? So this particular question is, they have uh, den leaders, maybe short on their committee, can their den leaders also multiple as a committee member in the same Cub Scout pack? So the answer is, is yes, they can. However, they're not a multiple, meaning that they don't, they, they still gonna have to pay the adult registration fee, right? So on paper, they're gonna be listed as being a den leader. Off paper, they may be the den leader along with potentially say the fundraising chair for the pack. So, so, so the answer is, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's reality right now in scouting is, is we all wear many hats, um, you know, and, and that was my case actually when I was uh, in my pack, um, my son's pack is I was not only a den leader, but I also ran, uh, was the fundraising chair as well for, for, for my son's pack. So, so yeah, I mean, we can certainly wear many hats, but you still have a, it's still gonna have to be a paid, paid member. Yeah, John, exactly. And I think, you know, just to show how that impacts on internet rechartering is we have to think of it as one name per one position. So when you go through internet rechartering, you, you as a unit will not be able to multiple a DIN leader as a committee member. It has to have a specific unique name Correct. for that position. The only exception to that would be a chartered organization representative who can multiple themselves as a committee chair, for example. But on paper, when you're doing internet rechartering, it's one name per position. Whether or not uh, people wear multiple hats in your unit operation is different, but the BSA requires uh, the five volunteers have to be unique names. You can't you can't carry them over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question here, and this is a good feedback from Elaine, is mentioning um, that we can undo. If you accidentally remove somebody from your roster during internet rechartering, um, a feature to be able to undo that change. Yeah. So I'm going to click on Alvin here. I'll go to manage members and I'm going to say remove from charter. And I'm going to do remove. Okay. All right, so now what you're gonna see at here is you're gonna see where you got a pack roster, you got removed members. I apologize for the phone if you hear it. Um, click on removed members. And then if you say, oh, you know what, I, Alvin, you know what, he should have stayed. Click on Alvin. And then right here, it's gonna say add to recharter. Click on add recharter, add. And now Al Alvin has been added back into, um, back into the charter. So there he is. Great question. Thank you for bringing that up because we all do make mistakes. Perfect. Another question here again on, on multiples, just a, a clarification here. Uh, Jennifer asked if uh, their scoutmaster for the troop um, is also uh, in the pack. Um, should they register first as the scoutmaster and then multiple it in the pack? Uh, what would be your advice on handling a uh, scoutmaster who also volunteers in the Cub Scout pack. pack? Who should pay for the registration yeah. as primary? So my 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 again, this is my opinion, right? Um, my opinion is is that his primary should be uh, the troop, uh, the Scout BSA, because that's where he's the scoutmaster, and mm -hmm. and as scoutmaster, you are a member. You know, of course, you're a key three member. So my recommendation would be he should be primary at the uh, the troop level and multiple at the pack level. Great. Uh, John, we, we currently don't have any more uh, questions unanswered. We went through uh, a few of them. Uh, some of them we addressed during the, the presentation. Um, I've included uh, uh, some resources in the chat. Uh, nhscouting.org forward slash rechartering is our a web page for our internet rechartering resources. Uh, the Member Care Center um, is ready to help with internet rechartering. Uh, I serve as the, the team lead for the Member Care team, and I'm gonna be uh, in the office supporting uh, units during the internet rechartering process as well, and happy to uh, to meet at any time to, to help answer questions as, as my availability allows. Uh, but I would also ask, too, as you have questions leaving tonight's meeting, to uh, email us at support at nhscouting.org. I'm the person that receives all those tickets, 
uh, read everyone that comes in. So uh, I'll make sure to uh, address any uh, rechartering or unit service questions that you have as well. But your commissioners are also a great resource for uh, frontline support to be able to help you uh, and guide you through that process as well. And with that, um, if we have nothing else left, I uh, would love to be able to return everybody back to their families and to enjoy the, enjoy the evening. Um, I hope this was very helpful for you guys. Um, and, and again, I, I do truly appreciate everything that you do for, for, for the, the youth of New Hampshire. Um, I can't tell you the benefits. Uh, you guys see the benefits of it every single day. Every time you go out and talk to a youth, every time you see that smiling face, Every time you see that scout who hits the bullseye at Camp Carpenter uh, in the archery and they've never shot a bow and arrow before, uh, it's absolutely awesome to see and to watch that excitement from, from the youth. So, so thank you for everything that you do. Enjoy uh, your evening. And, and again, um, God bless everyone. Good night. <laughs>